Broadcasting live from sunny South Florida, this is KMA Talk Radio. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of fine cigars. Your KMA crew, the Italian scallion, Paul DeGracco, Alex Tavella, a.k.a. The Goat, and always telling it like it is, Honest Abe. I like to smoke them like the Winston Churchill. Good morning to all our loyal listeners, libertarians, and lovers of relief. I am your host, Honest Abe, and as always, I am with my trusted gang, the Italian scallion himself, Paul DeGracco, and the man they call the goat, Alex Tavella. We are broadcasting live from sunny South Florida. This is episode 470. Man, we're 30 weeks away from our 500th episode. Oh, man. That's a lot of pressure. That came in quick. Wow. Five. It's a lot of pressure for me. Oh, yes. Yeah. Your life is full of pressure. As you getting the show started, Paul, which was completely your fault. Wow. You know, it's so great. Like, the listeners all turn on you so quickly. The second quickly. they see, it's well, just unbelievable. Even Tom Pauser, I, like, was really surprised. Turn on you, that would kind of mean they'd have to be on your side at some point. I'm not Stop sure. Stop it. Some of them are on my side. I'm not sure if it's really a turn. If you're on a, if you're on my side, please uh, show some love in the Facebook and YouTube comments. Oh, I'm you just, just set yourself up for such heartache, right there, man. I know you're right. Uh, I gotta tell you what, though. I mean, not that I enjoy being late. We had a little technical difficulty this morning, but it's so cool to watch how many people are concerned. Like, there's no show. Oh right? yeah, Everybody's yeah, that is. I, I, me too. I was kind of looking at you know. I mean, I, I think I dig it. We become like an integral part of many people's saturday morning routine now it's like you know it's like brushing your teeth in the morning they got kind of got to do it gotta get their fix i like it let's see oh great banter topics for today paul love it just one (laughs) guy's got one fucking job that's 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 code for our listeners that's code for there is no banter topic i mean seriously do you want to wing it yeah how do you not just like come down on yourself or just like not doing things right I, I don't know it's such a simple thing most of it's cut and paste you add a few new lines how do you miss it yeah so i couldn't live with myself being so mediocre there you go here we go here they tag come. fire pole <laughs> there's, there's all the love coming through attacks Paul may have actually started that hashtag himself we'll never get rid of you <laughs> I'm like a fungus. I've I've grown. Can't get rid of me. Sometimes you get less of me, but I always come back. Really? I think I think yeah. we get, I think we get literally the bare minimum. Period. No. Oh yeah. I, no no no. Oh, yeah. Especially this week. As, Especially uh, this very, week. I called you. I called you at least three times about Actually, the show this week. Casey Casey's got the best point, man. I think Adam's available. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I, I'm. I think he's sorry. got a lot of time on his hands. Yeah. If that happens, I'm I'm going with Paul, bud. You're on your own. Paul's vacation is over already. His whole life's a vacation. That's so you you listen, man. Listen, man. You can't hide it. We know that, when that I'm, I'm not on vacation. I'm working. I'm oh, I'm stuck in a little room every day, oh. locked away from the world. Working all day. Everybody right now is feeling so sorry for you. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm not asking for sympathy, but you, you act like I don't work. You know, in fact, I shouldn't even mention this. Did I in say fact, you don't work? I just said your whole life's vacation. You have a job. I, well, it, I didn't say you have a Doesn't that mean? Job. Wait, I'm is, highly that interested mean that in that I, whatever. Wait a minute. Just I want to hear this in fact because... I just... I I'm gave up a, fa- I gave up a, a mini family trip this weekend. So I could do the show because I'm that dedicated. Oh, Heading out. to where? 
You didn't give up it shit. It doesn't matter something where. Like, something what do you went. Mean? No, 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 no. You opened to, that up. Listen, the trip to Disney didn't go through. He didn't give up. No, shit. it's not Disney. But where we were going, we were. I had them test the internet before we left because obviously I could going? not do the show like a couple of days going? before. Where were you? And going? their their internet was one one megabyte upload speed. <laughs> I was like, what? You would where were you going? You wouldn't cancel a shit for KMA Talk Radio. Get out of here. I did. I'm home alone. My kids. Where and my wife were home. you going, Paul? It's not important. Okay, it's not so important what, to what a family means, event. What it means, right. some sister-in-law, some wedding, who knows? But that what, what that really translates some wedding. to? What that really translates to? Some baby shower. That's where it was. What it really, <laughs> what it really translates to is Paul really didn't want to go. No, that's exactly. No. That's exactly what that translates to. Not everybody. Not everybody is like you. I like to interact with people. I like to be around people. Oh, yeah. I really do. Where, depending where it is, but I guarantee you. you if I can't look, drive my golf cart there, then it's, you didn't give up you know, shit it's a little bit KMA more difficult. Saturday. You just didn't want to go wherever or whatever it was. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. yeah but uh, sucks. It sucks I know you so well. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting used to uh, being in Florida life again. You know, walking outside to get the mail and having to change my shirt. It's been absurdly. It's been absurdly hot this summer. Like ridiculous, absurdly hot. What? Absurd. I do, I'm like begging for like, and you know what? What the problem is? I know living here for a while now that there's no relief until like October, if that. Like I remember, I remember Halloween some some Listen, years being I soaked never, with sweat. I can't remember for years a summer bothering me like this summer. I literally walked in the shop the other day. All I did was went to the computer place, you know, on the other side of the plaza. I walked out of my car, got back in my car, drove it, and out my. I had the sweat spots through my shirt already. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember it being like that. You know, I mean, and give me, don't get me wrong. It's not like Vegas hot, but I just don't remember it being like this for, for, for many, hot. many years. Gross. It's it's gross hot. hot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I took uh, Eli yeah. yesterday to Lion Country Safari and uh, like a little drive through safari what? park, but then he wanted to go to the park part after that because I was off yesterday. Your whole life's like, vacation. Oh. See, it's those little statements. Because see, Alex. No, we had a float. We had I'm a floating saying, holiday I'm, yesterday. I'm just saying a floating holiday. I'm just saying, you know, Alex and I really struggle to say, hey, you know, let's, you know, maybe I can get some time with my son. Maybe I could do this this weekend. Maybe you know, you, you're, you do, you're doing you're stuff like every other day. Alex is there till 11 p.m. playing chess. Nah, not 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 all the time. So listen, time. what does that mean? My kid goes to bed at eight thirty. That's what I was I mean, gonna say. See, yeah, there's only a window. To bed, what does it make a difference? Yeah, there's only My a window of time. See me at home. <laughs> no, I mean, that's the rule. Of thumb. Yeah, you have the perfect. You have the perfect setup. Yeah, I, I have the perfect setup. You do. What's the perfect setup? I'm just curious. She doesn't want you there anyway. Oh, dude, your you, wife. You get you get in the way. Your wife doesn't want you there. <laughs> Anybody listen, I didn't I didn't say she doesn't want me there, but you know, she's got her own universe. I you know it's funny when the kids were really, really younger, and especially in this, you know, you know, in school year, because they got to go to bed earlier. Like I got to that point where I, I didn't make it home before the kids went to bed. I'll just finish some work. You know, it's not like my wife's right. calling me, where are you? Why aren't you home? You know, but if I could make it to spend an hour or so with the kids before they go to bed, that that was like the goal of the day. I agree with that. You agree with what? Uh, you work at home. Good to make friends. Yeah, I good. do. I don't have the time that you have. You, it, you know, it's time. funny. You said, Abe, you you made a comment on last week's show that after your vacation, you, you needed some. You needed to take some time off from the kids. But uh, yeah. I I get that now. I get that not leaving the not leaving to go to an office every day. Like, oh man, <laughs> like I need a break. Even if I'm not like actively doing stuff with them during the day, man, it is tough being around them all Listen, day. Listen, it was 35 days of being with them morning till night all day. It was like, holy yeah. shit. Whew, it's, a it's a lot. It's a and lot. your kids are older, so at least they're somewhat self-sufficient. But honestly, it's it's the young one that, that really just yeah. like, wears you out. The boy just kills me. And, and you're there, so he wants to do something with you constantly, right? Yeah, that's not even that's that. the problem. It's just that he, he's so stimulus driven, and he's in this country, right. you know, walking down the streets. As he's, got, and he's walking up, to, he got scratched by a stray cat. He thinks it's like some domesticated thing. He's walking up to, you have to watch him like every little second 
because right. everything stimulates him and he needs to go interact with everything everywhere you know <laughs> you know the, you know he's walking he's walking to the corner store there's 300 goats you know sheep walking down the main road and he's like wants to go run in the herd I'm like whoa <laughs> bad, <dude. laughs> oh yeah it was fatiguing he was he was fatiguing the girl's not so bad but yeah he was and seven. he's five right seven no turns, seven right oh, turns, seven. Turns, turns turns eight next month oh my god so it's no still, more baby. he's still like oldest, that oldest is in high school started high school this year oh it's insane let me tell you what's going on with school you, systems i don't know where how it is around the country right now but like in florida there are no bus drivers yep there are no bus drivers kids need to wait while buses go drop off another route and then come back and then come they back a second yes yep, they do a second trip they're doing it here too in our community so petra in high school now between the time she gets out and um gets on a bus and gets home is over two hours wow so so and she but she's a little ways away what is she she's probably a 25 minute ride no so that's to a her long drive bro it's like two almost two hours and 20 minutes from the time the last bell rings and she can get home from driving right, but then downtown west palm that's a lot yeah it's insane so actually starting get her ready for commuting when she starts a job no she's already commuting she just changed her schedule monday self-sufficient great girl got on the computer did it herself she's going to take the bus to school in the mornings when she gets out of school she's going to hop on the tri-rail get off right here at boyton um i'll go pick her up i mean I, actually it's walking distance but i'll probably go pick her up for the first week until i'm you know secure it's literally like a block away and then yeah. she's going to come here and do two or three hours of homework, whatever she's got to do until I go home. And if I don't go home, AJ lives right by us. He leaves at six. He yeah. Home. Right. Right. So and right. I think it'd be good for her because now she's going to be locked down to do like homework at least two hours right. a day, no matter what. So I, I think it'll be good. And she likes it. And yeah, she's going to start that this Monday. She's working in the office or at the warehouse? No, she worked this summer. At the warehouse and she wants to work during breaks and maybe weekends here and there she likes working the work she's the oldest really likes the whole cigar culture community i think when she did the, the great smoke in 2021 got exposed to everybody and then more involved and worked the vip booth like she's just right, right, the right. whole cigar thing she loves coming here um she gets excited she's got like she'll run into teachers who either shop at our shop go to the great smoke or listen to kma yeah. talk radio i had to give her swag I, like, listen give this to your teacher but you gotta sneak it in. <laughs> don't don't go don't right. go handing it to him in front of everybody. But he had been, he had awesome. been listening to K May talk radio, and he didn't even know that Petra was my daughter. That is funny. Yeah, some cool stuff. But anyways, we we got a good show today. Always fun as always. First time guests. First time. I love when we have first time guests because, like, for me, it's like I feel like a listener, right? Right. Good. Have the time where I'm doing these shows, I I know the ins and outs of everybody already, so. I'm asking more for our audience than I am for myself, but when we have first time, uh, first time guests, it's always cool for me. So why don't we get it going, Paul? And uh, let's see, uh, let's get our meet your maker up. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell. It's time to meet your maker. And joining us live is Zaya S. Yunan of El Septimo Cigars. Zaya, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Pleasure being here. Good morning, all. Oh, great mm -hmm. having you. In fact, I got we got asked on our socialite page what we smoke um, every week on KMA, and typically we always show the label, so I, I'm going to consciously do it this week. I'm smoking the Raphael of the Sacred Hearts Collection. Yeah, that's the great seven, yeah. Yep, that's what I'm enjoying today. Yeah. So, Raphael, where are you broadcasting from this morning? I'm all the way in uh, California, Malibu, California. Oh, oh early morning. Yeah. And I'd like to apologize to everybody that the few minutes delay is all my fault, you know? Uh, we, no, we, it's okay. We would blame Paul anyway. Yeah. So, so, this is what to happen to I'll set up all these uh, iPad and uh, computers and all that stuff. You know, I'm a cigar maker, not, a, not an IT guy. So, <laughs> let me just give you a little bit about KMA culture here. Everything always just gets blamed on Paul. It really doesn't matter whose fault it is. We just, Paul just always gets the blame because you're right about 98% of the time. So 
You never have to accept blame. We just blame Paul. Ninety eight is a lot, but sure. I'm the I'm the literal punching bag for uh, for oh, KMA. Not a problem. Self self made punching bag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's just be clear about that. You're you're not a victim here, Paul. I don't want to go. It, I don't want to get into this, but I had a. Is a blessing. Is a blessing. Self made troublemaker. Yep. <laughs> I never looked at it that way. Well, actually, it's funny, you know, because we always encourage our, our, our blenders and cigar makers to be a troublemakers. And we say, go in the room, make some trouble. They say, what do you mean? Make cigars? He says, no, go in the room, make some trouble. When you make a trouble, good things always comes out of it. Oh, wow. I think, Paul, you might have found your first supporter. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a new job. Right. <laughs> if I could only blend cigars, my problem is I taste something. I say I like it or I don't like it. My wife is a is a small yay, and she's she's always like, you know, what do you taste? What do you? Th-? I'm like, I, I don't know. I like this and I don't like that. That's that's what I know. Sometimes I pick a good one. Yeah. So, is I, I'd like to really get into your history. You know, I, I just recently watched the series The Offer, and any anybody who hasn't seen The Offer watch it um it's on paramount so you, you know if you don't have paramount sign up for the free day three trial on the weekend watch the 10 episodes and then cancel your membership but totally worth it and especially anybody who's a um um a godfather fan it's like a must watch you have to watch the offer. It, it's literally about how the movie was made and everything that went on during that time um from the perspective of al ruddy uh the director of uh the producer of uh the godfather but you know there's a character uh, Charles Bluthorn on there, Austrian guy, self-made millionaire, um, literally started out selling typewriters in the street and basically began Gulf and Western. And I've only met you for a short time, but after watching this, uh, you kind of almost remind me of this character. And, and it's really funny because when you watch the movie, it, I ended up spending more time online uh, Googling and researching the people and the live events as I was watching a series. So it took me extra long to finish it. But like Bloodhorn got very involved in the Dominican Republic, wanted to make it a movie mecca, and, and actually acquired Consolidated Cigar, um, which ended up being all to this. So he even ties to the industry I'm in today and was involved in Casa de Campo development and um, the big restaurant on the mountain, uh, Altus de Chavon. So He's actually connected to the industry, but you know, you you have an amazing story. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your history, um, Zaya, and and you know your beginnings to to the point to where we got in the cigar business? Oh yeah, great, my pleasure. You know, you always do good things when you grow up hungry, right? <laughs> yep. You always you always motivated, right, to uh, uh, to work harder and pay attention and details and. Uh, uh, but since, you know, I'm a, I'm a son of a truck driver, I'd like to always start saying that uh, son of a truck driver uh, that uh, uh, saw my father struggling, working very hard all his life, you know, raising, raising his family, you know, thank God, large family. And what country was it in? Uh, pardon me? When you, when you were growing up, where was it? Well, I was, I was born in Iran. I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian Assyrian. I was born in Iran, and at age of 13, uh, we moved to U.S. And, oh, wow, okay. Uh, yeah, and first place we went was Chicago. So uh, we went to Chicago because at that time, Chicago was mecca of manufacturing. So everybody who come in this blessed country, uh, 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 obviously the first thing they want is a job, right? So we go to, most people went to Chicago, Detroit, because there was a lot of manufacturing going on out there to, to start their life. And, and, and truly, it was a blessing for us to come to the United States. I love this country, and uh, uh, it is a blessed country. It is a blessed to be here. And um, um, every time, everything that I have, I, I, I devoted to being here, this beautiful country, and God himself. So uh, I went to school, and, uh, you know, as I said, I was tired of being uh, hungry and nobody. Uh, I finished school early at the uh, age of 19. The first job I had was with General Motors in the advanced engineering group. And um, at age of uh, 21, I invented an airbag, automotive airbag, and uh, for General Motors. And then airbag became a, a, a standard product on all vehicles throughout this country and throughout the world. 
And then um, after that, I grew an organization. We started developing more advanced product like uh, 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 PDS part distance control, uh, coos control, uh, 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 variable temperature seal, and many other automotive products. So, so I grew up in automotive industry, and um, I was very fortunate uh, that uh, I worked hard and I grew up fast in the corporation. And then uh, after that, I worked for uh, two other uh, Fortune 500 companies, uh, Johnson Control and TRW. I was the president of both divisions for automotive system groups. And then after that, I worked for startups. Uh, 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 my first startup job was working for Sam Walton, uh, founder of Walmart. Uh, uh, they had a venture capital group that they uh, uh, invest in the advanced technology for precision farming because they wanted, they were from Arkansas and they wanted to help the farmers uh, to get technology into the day-to-day -day work so they can actually produce more product easier because being a farmer is a very difficult job. So I become familiar with farming and being involved in farming, soil analysis, seed growth, PDS, precision farming, equipment, structuring, growth, weather, climate, moisture, early on back almost 30 years ago. So uh, 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 from there, I started two of my companies. Uh, one was Pronounce Technologies, which we invented it, uh, uh, automotive uh, navigation system, um, which we sold it later. And then after that, uh, we worked for Lockrain. We developed a, a petroleum uh, for oil and gas, uh, a, a piping monitoring system. That we also sold that. Uh, and then after that, I worked for another company uh, in Europe that they invented IP technology for gaming industry. And we also sold that. And then uh, back in 2000, uh, I wanted to start another company, but not in the high tech, not in the automotive, something totally different. So I started uh, Yonan Properties, which uh, from 2000 to 2004, we became the largest uh, uh, commercial real estate investment group uh, in the country. Uh, I had, heard a rumor that you own more office space than any other entity in, in America. Yeah, not now, not now, but uh, back from 2007 to 2010, we were the largest commercial real estate owner. We own some of the tallest building in the world, like John Hancock, uh, uh, 200 North LaSalle. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, I've been uh, in the restaurant up there a few times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Met Club, yeah. And uh, uh, so from there in uh, 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 2015, uh, uh, I got a little bit tired of real estate. I wanted something else. So so we went to Europe. We started growing in Europe. We started buying hotels. We started buying golf courses uh, uh, all over Europe. And then uh, we started getting into uh, designing uh, a product, uh, 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 leather goods, uh, travel baggage, and so forth. And by uh, the way, I, before I forget, I have to send you a big thank you from my wife, Brandy. Mm -hmm. um, she wanted to make sure I told you thank you. The handbag came that you'd sent her. She loves it. She uses it every day. So yeah, I hope she. I hope she likes it. Yeah, she did. She wanted me. She uses it every day. She. I mean, I've, yeah. I've seen her every day since she's gotten it. So yeah. she really wanted me to make sure I said thank you today. It is. And when, and when he says like handbags, this is not like you know your regular run of the mill stuff. I mean, it is stunningly gorgeous stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made a joke to my wife. My wife was always wearing uh, 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 other handbags by other leading designer. So I said to say, I said, you know, I'm I'm getting tired of seeing you wearing other people's products. So I'm gonna design you one. So I designed her one. She started wearing it and uh, won many competition worldwide. We start getting into a spirit. Uh, we have a champagne house. We have a vineyard. We have a cognac house. All in all in France, in Europe, we own overall about fifty-seven different companies, over twelve thousand employees worldwide, and uh, and then tobacco. Uh, 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 you know, I've been smoking cigar for thirty years, and uh, thirty-two years. And uh, um, uh, two years ago, somebody gave me uh, El Septimo to smoke, and uh, when I took the cigar, I said, "You know, I've been smoking cigar for a long time." I've never heard this name, El Satima. And they said, well, it's a, it's a boutique cigar company. They call it Cigar for the Kings because they have limited production, only 50,000 sticks a year. And all those are sold for all the royal families in Europe and all the kings in the Middle East. So I, I was so factuated with this product. It was unbelievable. When I smoked the cigar, 
you know, I'm a sommelier in a way too because we make wines, cognac, spirits. So you you learn to understand them in the theoretical way, right? Not just the taste, but theoretical ways because a good liquor, a good cigar, not only leaves an impression on your mouth, but also leaves an impression in your soul. And, and that's where you have your seven sense pops in when your soul is touched with the experience, right? You start thinking about the product, not only enjoying it, but you start thinking about the product. So I was fascinated with El Septimo, right? I said, uh, I got to buy more of this cigar, but I couldn't because they were producing limited quantity. And I had to wait sometimes five, six months to get a box. So I got tired of waiting. I bought the company two years ago. So here we are with El Septimo. I got tired of waiting. We have a question. <laughs> we have a question from a, a listener, Erica Everett. Is your wine distributed in the U.S.? We we uh, we brought the wine last month. It's being distributed starting next month, September, in the U.S. And it is a wine that made in uh, Saint Emilion, um, Bordeaux, France region. It's a Grand Cru. So Grand Cru is the most famous appellation in the world for making wines. And um, um, there is something unique about this wine. It's both white wine and red wine. Uh, uh, and it's a French wine, French blend with three different grapes. Uh, that the wine before was bottled was actually fermented further six months in the tobacco barrels. So as a hint of tobacco in the wine. Interesting. Hmm. Wow. That is interesting. I mean, I don't know how years ago. Look, look, look at the burn on that sucker. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, the burn, the, the burn is important for many categories. If you look at that, for example, uh, the color of the ash tells you a lot. The color of the ash tells you a lot. Sometimes if I look at the ash of the cigar, I can tell you all the composite of the cigar uh, because from the color, you can get the profile of the cigar, profile really? of the leaves. And uh, you want the color of the ash to be a darker, darker color, darker gray and black. You yeah. want it to be a structured buildup where you have both combination of gray and black, just exactly like the way you had it. That is a perfect cigar, perfect blend, uh, uh, great tobacco that comes from the rare regions of the world. So you mentioned you've been smoking cigars for 30 years ago. I always find it interesting. Do you remember how you got into cigars? Was it somebody? Was it an event? Was it a function? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you a story about this. You'd be interested. You know, it's always a good story for most. Yeah, people. yeah. You know, when I when I was a kid, I was working for General Motor. Uh, uh, production line stopped. Production line stopped because there was a, a, a fracture in the transmission line. So when production starts in the assembly line, you got to remember there are close to 2,000 cars in the assembly process that being assembled at different stage of assembly. So when the production line stops, you got 8,000 people suddenly stop working, yeah. right? So I was, a, I was a little young engineer, you know, but very curious. And when production line star, stops, they have to call all kinds of people. They have to have a union representative comes to do the investigation uh, to make sure, you know, uh, uh, there is no hazards for any of the employees before they get the line start going. So I got curious to what the problem was. So I figured out what the problem is, make the story short. I saw the problem, production line gets going. And then I got cited by the plant manager for being involved in the process. And I, I was a design engineer, so I wasn't permitted to be on the plant. The only reason I went to the plant because I was curious why production line stops and I wanted to do something to help the process. So uh, uh, they pulled me aside. They said, you have, should have never done that. This is not your job. I said, I'm sorry. I work for the company. I just tried to be helpful. They said, well, go pack up your stuff. So I thought oh, I'd get wow. hired, right? They said, go pack up your stuff. And I was in the job yeah. for like a few months. I said, what am I going to tell my mom? What am I going to tell my dad? They sent me to university. Right. Now I lost my first job, right? So right when I was leaving and I was about to cry, you know, little young guys, you know, packaging his stuff in this big, big briefcase that he saved money for two years to buy. Jesus. And uh, 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 a, a human resource vice president came in. She said, uh, 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 um, uh how long does it take you to pack up your stuff? I said, why? She says, how long does it take you to pack up your stuff for a couple of months? I said, give me an hour. She says, go back home. Somebody will come pick you up. So I went home, packed up my stuff. Big limousine came in, took me straight to Detroit. Uh, Jack Smith, which was the chairman of General Motors back then. And back then, 
Now I'm talking about before a lot of your listeners were born, I'm talking about back in 1983. And uh, General Motors was the largest company in the world back then. So Jack Smith heard about what I did, and he was very impressed with this young kid that uh, uh, go out of his way, figure out what the problem is, and solve it all by his own so the production line continues to get moving. He was impressed with that. He called me. I started working for him directly. I was sitting actually in the office with him, you know, the chairman of the biggest company in the world. And on the first night, he says to me, uh, uh, you're doing something for dinner? I said, no. He says, we'll go have dinner together. I said, great. So he took me to a steakhouse. And back then, you could smoke in the restaurant, believe it or not. So we sat in this beautiful steakhouse. He says, uh, do you smoke? I said, I never have. He says, well, you're going to smoke a cigar tonight. I said, great. I can't wait. <laughs> he says, do you drink? I said, not much. He said, well, you're going to drink a lot tonight. I says, great. Let's do it. So that was my first cigar, smoking it with Jack Smith. And thereafter, we used to smoke cigar in his office every day because, again, back then, you could smoke cigars in the restaurants, in the office, in the airplane. So it was a cool time. I missed all that time. I mean, how many people could say that the head of General Motors is what got him into cigars? I mean, that's right. my God. Oh, he was a chain cigar smoker. He used to smoke average of seven and eight a day. So cigar was always in his hand. Wow. You know, it's funny because, like I said, you really remind me of Bloodhorn, who was Austrian born. And, and then, you know, after all these achievements in life, got into the cigar business, right? So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a, when, I, when I was watching the movie, I was literally really thinking of you. What, so you acquired a company that you had no background experience, completely different from anything you have done prior in life. What was that like? Was it a shock or, I mean... Was it like a lot? I mean, it had to be completely different than anything you had dived into before. Well, you know, funny thing was a, the first thing that went in my mind to buy this company, I said back then they had 22 different blends of cigars. And I was, I had two of them and I fell in love with both of them. And I figured what the other 20 would taste like. So as soon as I bought the company, the first thing I did, I went in there and I got all 22 blends, took them to the hotel, left the window open, turned on the air conditioning, and I smoked them all, all night long. Wow. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then after that, you know, when you are when you're a lover of a product, you, you buy the product to enjoy it, obviously, because uh, life is too short not to enjoy yourself, you know? And we always look for a way of finding a hobby and a habit that, uh, you know, adds a value in our life, right? And uh, uh, But when you buy the company, uh, it becomes a social and personal responsibility. Now you are responsible not only for the company, for the people, for the employees, but more important than that, you are responsible for consumers, the people who buy your product, the people who, who enjoy your product, the people that use your product. So then you put a different hat together from you start from just enjoying a product. You're trying to perfect the product, right? You're trying to see how you can add value to the product, right? Uh, uh, because making a cigar is as is actually in many ways more complicated than making wines. That and that I know because we've been making wine for many, many, many years in Europe. Making a wine when you ferment it and you blend it is easy to be able to call the notes and the taste. In cigar, it's far more complex because the smoke is not liquid. It's, a, it's mm -hmm. not as dense as liquid that you can basically break it apart to see what the alcohol level is, what the taste level is, what the sugar level is, right? With cigars, you can't do it. So it's a complicated science, you know, that it, I frankly, I wonder how many people who really make cigars really do understand it, right? And, and you have to understand that process before you make your next cigars. Otherwise, you're making something not knowing what you're making. So we spent a long time understanding that process. And then we did, you know, we have a, we have a large organization. We're a $7 billion uh, company. So then what we did, we started introducing new products. So since we bought El Satimo in uh, two years ago, we introduced 22 new cigars. Uh, we introduced Sacred Art Collection. We introduced Emperor Collection. And we introduced over 20 different accessories from uh, lighters to cutters to ashtrays, 
uh, to Havana bags to carry your cigar and so forth. So it becomes really joyful try to uh, uh, add value to the brand that already was perfect in many ways and creating something that the mass consumer will enjoy. So when we brought the company to United States a year and a half ago, obviously we spent six months getting all the FDA approval. So we had been in the market in United States only for the past 12 months, really. And the first experience you got from us was doing a PCA. Right. Last year. Right. Um, why do you think that the company before you owned it never tried to have, is, was it just a production issue that they never sold the line here in the U S uh, for two reasons. Uh, one reason is there are there are many important things that you need to follow in order to make a perfect cigar. OK, one, of course, is God given soil. You have to have the right soil. If you don't have the right soil, your your nicotina plant will not have the density and the oil that you need to create the flavor. The second that you need is uh, 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 obviously expertise and uh, uh, fermentation process, right? How you ferment the tobacco, how you age the tobacco. You obviously want to age the tobacco in a way that uh, uh, prevents from the oil into a stems, into a leaf to be evaporated because if they're evaporated, the taste is gone. And the third comes blending. How do you blend it together, right? Sometimes people say, oh, I'm a blender for this blend. I said, just one blender? Because we don't have one blender. We have close to 800 different blenders. How many? So, yeah, absolutely. Because one guy or one woman shouldn't decide what the taste should be for millions of people, right? You have to get a collaborative hmm. effort from a lot of people, right? So sometimes I meet the cigar maker. He says, well, I'm the blender for this brand. And I said, seriously? Because I'm not for El Septimo. And all these guys are not. It goes way beyond that, right? Because you have to get collective data, right? For man, from woman, from old, young, big, small, living in this country, living in another country, you have to get that global profile of flavor and see how you can satisfy it. Because when you sell a cigar, you don't know who's buying it, who's tasting it, yet you are obligated to make sure they will enjoy it, right? <laughs> right. So we take that at El Septimo very seriously, right? So... When you go through those three processes, right, blending it, then the tobacco becomes very rare. Now, some people say Cuban tobacco is the best. Some people say Dominican Republic is the best. Nicaragua is the best. Ecuador is the best, right? And all of these countries today at some times or at most times have produced great tobacco, right? But sometimes because of the global warming, because of a lack of rain or lack of sun, or lack of different environmental condition, your harvest doesn't produce good crop. For example, two years ago, all of our crops for winemaking was completely destroyed because the weather was cold. It destroyed right. the crops. We couldn't make good wine because the first flower fell. We had to make wine from second flower. So the taste wasn't there, right? So for the region that makes wine, San Emilion Grand Cru, Grand Cru Class A, a makes wine for 2,000 years, always perfect. Last year, we couldn't make wine. We couldn't make wine to sell it for $10 a bottle. So we choose not to make wine, right? So going around the world, finding the best tobacco, because each year the best tobacco is made different place, depending on the you know, environment and climate condition and on and on and on, right? It's very difficult and very expensive. The average tobacco per kilogram is sold about $9 per kilogram, right? A good tobacco, a great tobacco, a tobacco that is rare and gives you certain flavor that you just cannot find any place else, sometimes it's sold as much as $100 per kilogram. But that's not just the major obstacle. The obstacle is how do you find it and how do you get it and how do you buy it? Because when you find it, you go to these guys, you say, hey, I want half a ton of tobacco. They said, no, we got five ton. We're going to sell it to one person. So who's got the most money? We'll sell it to him because we just want to make one sale and be done with it. The right. El Septimo before didn't have the financial whereabout to be able to do that, to buy finest tobacco in the world in big masses. But now they do because they're part of a $6 billion company. And that's what made us to produce Sacred Art Collection, Emperor Collection, 
which are some of the finest cigars ever made because there is some of the finest tobacco in the world in it. Now, the Emperor's Collection hasn't shipped yet, has it? No, the Emperor Collection um, 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 is still in the fermentation process. Uh, uh, one of the things we do, a lot of cigar makers should do, they're not doing, is that uh, uh, um, uh, we go to a long aging process of our tobacco. Our tobaccos age anywhere from 5 to 15 years. 15 years before the ship, and then people obviously buy them and, sh and store them for a longer period to age them even longer, right? So uh, we are going to a form, final um, um, uh, conditioning stage right now. The cigars are finished. We'll be shipping them next month here, packaging them, and then shipping them to all the customers. So it'll be shipped by October. Now, when you say you use tobaccos aged 5 to 15 years, you're you know, you being in the company, obviously, hasn't been that long. So are you buying aged tobaccos? Yes, we do. Yes. We, we, we are doing both. We are aging tobacco ourselves, and we're buying aged tobacco. And there is a lot of aged tobacco. I mean, there are a lot of great family, farming family. Um, and these are the families that uh, left Cuba a long time ago, 1950s. They went to, you know, all over the South American countries. And these had that Cuban heritage, that Cuban soul, that making cigar was the absolute, absolute art of living for them. So they just don't make tobacco to sell. They make tobacco to really people enjoy. These families went and they start producing nicotina plant in some of the rarest parts of the world, Nicaragua, Ecuador, uh, DR, and they start aging them for a long time. They age only 5 to 10% of the crops because they can't age the whole thing because they have to sell it to make a living, right? They have to pay the electricity bill. They have to pay the employees. So aging tobacco, you, you have to have a patient because imagine you pick the tobacco, right? And then you have to sit on it for 15 years before you sell it. Before you can sell it, yeah. Exactly. So, um, um, uh, so we find those tobaccos and we integrate them. All of our cigars are long fillers. Of course, premium cigars should be long fillers. So imagine as a long fillers, you have to have this leaf in the actual form shape that we have to include them into the assembly process and make a fine cigar. Now, making, making fine cigar a is very doable, right? But, oh, my God, it's a difficult thing. I tell you, I, I designed some of the most complicated uh, microchips in the world, the one that are in your car, the one that are in the refrigerator, the one that are in your washing machines. And often I find making cigars is more complicated than that because in developing a chip, there is a science. If you know your math, your physics, your chemistry, you can follow that science, make a product. In making cigar, the science is so complicated that is all to try and error. So we don't make cigars just to make it and get the buck out of it. We make cigars to leave a long lasting impression on people. And when I see people telling us, I smoked El Septimo once and I couldn't smoke anything else, that is a reward we like to get for all the hard work we do. You wouldn't happen to have any of those extra chips lying around because I'm having trouble finding a car anywhere. <laughs> Let me know. I hope you are. <laughs> so, so um is that the reason i mean look i mean we have to be honest and clear here right your cigars range in price from 20 to 80 dollars um it definitely makes for a niche consumer market um that that will fall in their range of what they're willing to spend is, is it all that intricacy in the tobacco that really Put, put that kind of a price tag on the quality of your cigars? Yeah. But, uh, uh, Abe, let me tell you something about physics of cigars. I'm sure you will enjoy listening to it. All your listeners will love it, right? The average nicotina plant, it takes us 12 months to raise because every year we have to put the seeds, right? So you have to plant the seed. You have to wait 12 months uh, in order to be able to um, uh, grow this plant. It's like a growing a baby, right? Now with the baby, you feed them in the morning and lunch and dinner, and that's it. With these plants, you have to be around them all day long. Make sure they get enough sun, they get enough moisture, the soil is conditioned properly, oxygen is oxygenated at the root of the root of the nicotina plant. So it's a complicated process, right? An average nicotina plant, which is about six feet, six and a half feet tall, it has anywhere from 30 to 45 leaves on it. 
um, uh, uh, it produces only average of 50 to 60 grams of tobacco. That's all. So when you make a premium cigar, long filler, right? From an average nicotina plant, we could make anywhere two to three cigars from the entire plant. That's all, right? So wow. for example, you're looking at this Fabuloso here, right? This Fabuloso is a big gauge cigar. I love to start my Saturday morning smoking a big gauge cigar because it's going to be in my mouth for a long time. And I like to enjoy the complexity of the taste because big gauge cigars, the advantage of big gauge cigars is that it's got double the fillers of a normal cigar. So you got more taste into it, right? From the entire nicotina plant, one plant that it takes us a year to baby and raise, we can only make two cigars like this. <laughs> so when you say the price 20 to $80 is expenses is, is obviously relative to all the effort and work goes in it. Now, if you make short filler cigars, right, that basically you don't waste the tobacco. You put all of the pieces, you know, all of the grinds, all of the uh, tail and top, you know, the top and tail of the uh, leaf in it, then you can produce a much cheaper cigar, right? But of course, you won't get the experience and the pleasure as smoking a premium cigar. Now, remember something else. When I was when I met El Saptimo, the average cigar price was fifty to three hundred dollars a stick. When I met it, wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I reduced the price significantly so consumers can afford it. And now with Emperor Collection, we are introducing El Saptimo quality cigar for twelve dollars retail, and that's not that expensive. It's like driving a Rolls Royce. For twenty-five thousand dollars, right? So, so we came a long way to reduce the price. And uh, to me, to be honest with you, right now, is not about making money. Is about seeing people enjoying my brand because that's how I get my satisfaction. Wow. Well, we're gonna have a lot more with Zaya in hour number two. Jam packed hour number two. As always, um, name that jam with Owl Cigars. Uh, we'll also uh, put uh, Zaya through uh, Would You Rather. I have some interesting questions for him today and more questions coming up. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Keep it lit. Explore the unexplored with St. Louis Ray Carenas. Set sail to discover an extraordinary Honduran cigar deeply anchored in tradition. The St. Louis Ray Carenas features a Nicaraguan wrapper cloaked over 100% Honduran tobacco that make up the binder and filler. The St. Louis Ray Carenas, in the Toro size, received a 93 rating in Cigar Aficionado and was featured in their illustrious Top 25 Cigars of 2021 list. The St. Louis Ray Carenas is available in four different sizes, a Robusto, Toro, Bellicoso, and Magnum. So get ready to take a trip back in time to experience the heritage of St. Louis Ray with the St. Louis Ray Carenas. Phenomenal. 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 Welcome back to KMA Talk Radio. That's just a plug that I can never get tired of watching. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I'm telling you, there, there should be some annual award for quality uh, or you know, people who produce stuff like that because that would definitely win. Well, there you go. There's the guy right there. I don't know. It's it's a it's a it's a um unfortunately it's not a video to the masses, but my Steve Saka video is also in the running. I feel oh, like but that one's for me is better. I, I I don't get sick of watching that. It's just great. And you want to sing along with it too. Right. What's Steve Saka video? The one you were just laughing at in the Jesus. No, no, what? not that one. Kind of sword club one. Oh yeah, but that one we can't share. No, I, it's I, not for the masses. That's too long. Oh. It is long. Uh, those little snippets are really, really good. I thought you meant the the one that I played earlier when I was going through videos. Of well, him, that's uh, <laughs> that's the Steve Sock in a nutshell. Well, 
I'll play it so everybody knows it. Good evening, everybody. Honest Abe here from Smoking Headquarters in Boynton Beach, Florida. Kudos to you, Steve, for making one hell of a stick. Well, they actually don't know that the stick's any good at it yet. <laughs> That's so him. Yes. So, Zaya, <laughs> how, how is your musical acumen? Uh, not not very good to be honest with you, right? Well, we're, we're, <laughs> you not very much talented in that area. Probably because you've been working too hard, you know, like our friend Paul. <laughs> See, Paul, this is what hard work really is. I yeah, I can name I can name any song as long as it's uh, yeah. of my genre of choosing. You have nothing but free time. <laughs> so, well, you must you know you must uh, uh, compete in that show. Wasn't a show going on not long ago that you have to name a song? You know? And yeah. Then, Oh, yes. that's, that's basically our next segment. We're going to actually, uh, it's a segment called Name That Jam. It's sponsored by the fine folks at Avo Cigars. And Zion, unfortunately, this Saturday morning, we're going to test your musical acumen. We're going to see if you can name this I, I, jam. I, I, I can tell you it would be terrible, but I would try. <laughs> so. Let's see if you can name that jam. Pretty simple here. We're going to play three seconds of a song. Um, Alex, our KMA maestro, picks a selection every week, and we're going to see if uh, you can name it. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't, but let's run it. Oh, oh man, that's a rough one. Is it? I got it right away. I felt like that was a really? layup. That was oh my cool. god! I, I, I got that one right away. Paul, you should be ashamed Zaya, would, of yourself. That's I'm a sorry. layup. That's that. Zaya, would you like to hear it again? Yeah, go ahead. Zaya, if you're trying to shazam it, it won't give you enough time. Yeah, yeah we purposely. <laughs> we had, our, we, purposely our guests, we had our guests try it already. That's that <laughs> old band. What was the name of that band? Yeah, you're, 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 let's 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 play Hot for again. Let's play for again. Maybe hearing the clip will ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say it for a second. Sergeant Lonely something, Pepper. Let's see if he's correct. With Sergeant Pepper's lonely hearts come back. We hope you will enjoy the show. Yeah, wow. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten it. Well, it's I, I, funny. It's well, obviously because you know. At the age I am, right? That was what right. we take right that into consideration. That. I think yeah. you guys are too young for that, right? Oh uh, no, no, so. Paul! How did you not know a Beatles song right away? No, and I know, and I love the Beatles too. I said too. you should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, that was a layup. I, I, listen, the second I heard the music, I knew it was the Beatles, but then I had to run it through my head until I got to the song. But yeah, and, and he started saying, S -S 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 -S. "I'm like, oh, he's gonna get it. Well done." Mr. Zyre, you have named that jam, sponsored by Avo Cigars, always eloquently writing music with tobacco. Thank you. Thank you to the fine folks at Avo Cigars. So to continue with our journey here with you, Zaya, um, some very interesting facts that I really, you know, I've been in the industry 26 years, and sometimes you hear things you didn't hear before. I understand that you only use rainwater to irrigate your plants. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, so I just, so our, in case our listeners don't, because I mean, there's many different ways to own a cigar brand. You have your own factory. We do. We have a somebody and, factory. Right? And it's in Costa Rica because you feel the Costa Rican soil and the climate produces the best tobacco. No, that's not true. Um, oh. Costa, no, Costa Rica doesn't produce the best tobacco. However, uh, Costa Rica, because it's a rainforest, right? It's a rainforest and has a high altitude. Uh, some of that living high altitude of Costa Rica is almost 9,000 feet above sea level. And uh, we do assembly of the cigar and we do fermentation and aging in Costa Rica because one of the biggest problems with it, there are two components with aging that is very complicated for cigar maker. One component is that when you age a cigar for a long time, it costs time and money, right? You have to 
aged for years and get paid back years later, right? That's one of the problems. The second problem is when you age a tobacco, you're afraid that diseases will come in. There are many diseases that come into the tobacco will destroy your crops, right? Or if you age it too fast, if you age it too fast, you dry out the essential oil into a leaf where the taste of the smoke comes from it, right? So those three components that make it difficult to age the tobacco. But we all know that aged tobacco tastes much better for the reasons we will discuss a little bit later, right? So um, from the put the financial standpoint aside because our target right now is to produce the best possible cigar we could make. Mm -hmm. And think about that aging, right? How can you age it for a long time without fear of diseases come to your tobacco? Because if the diseases comes, the tobacco is wasted. You have to throw it all away, right? You can't use it, right? When you age the tobacco in high altitude, right? Eight, 9,000 feet above the sea level. The air level is very thin. And because the air level is, the air density, oxidization is difficult to breathe you see less microbes living in that environment, less flies flying in that environment. So you can lay your tobacco in an open, natural way and not be afraid of the diseases impacting it. So that's one advantage of the um, um, uh, using a high altitude for fermentation process. The second advantage is because it's a rainforest, right? You get a combination of constant humidity, natural humidity, God-given humidity, and then you have natural sun. A tobacco leaf as a vegetable or a fruit, whatever you want to categorize it with, is one of the most dependent leaf on the sun. It requires average of eight to 10 hours of sun a day. So you get that sun, yet the sun doesn't dry out the tobacco fast because you get natural humidity full. It's a rainforest. Costa Rica is a rainforest, right? So we have learned that the best place to assemble a cigar is and to Asia tobacco is Costa Rica for those reasons. Okay, interesting. And the irrigation, only rainwater use for irrigation, is that correct? Yeah, well, it's difficult to have irrigation back in, in, in altitude, that level, obviously. And, um, 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 and uh, you don't need irrigation because there is plenty of moisture in the air, right? Is a rainforest, right? Moisture. Uh, Costa Rica temperature literally is the same every day of the week, every day of the year. Literally wow. same temperature. Literally same temperature every day of the year. And you get const you get rain every day. You get humidity every day, right? Natural humidity. And the reason you're using rain is because it has all of the natural ingredient, uh, uh, all of the minerals that it picks up in the air and it dumps it on the leaf and gets absorbed by the leaf. I was wondering if that was something that you took from the winemaking, because I know I know you know many uh, regions like like in Tuscany when you're growing um, uh, what is the the grape that they use for um, Chianti, um, whatever it is, they, they you need they they can't use irrigation. It's the, it's the it's the law that that for That's that correct. for that That's style correct. of wine it has to be natural rainwater. Yeah, so I was wondering if it was something. That's correct. There is there is a certain part of Italy, not all the Italy, certain part of Italy in the Tuscany region and then entire Bordeaux region in France, which is ruled right. by AOC. Right. And AOC say you cannot water the plant. And the reason for it is because they want the um, uh, plant root to constantly go down in the ground to search for water. And when it's traveling to the ground to search for the water, it takes all the mineral from the soil and the rocks under the ground. But like, for example, when we grow wine in Napa, right, we have to water it literally every day. The root right. doesn't begin into the ground. The root stays on the surface of the ground because it knows water is coming at the surface. It doesn't have to go any deep. That's why you have that earthy feeling and taste when you drink a good Italian wine or good French wine. You know, and that, and you want that earthy taste. And that's why you get that earthy taste in our tobacco, which is very rare if you compare it to others. Which is the main difference for me between old world and new world, which is, I mean, again, not knowing a lot about wine, but being an avid wine drinker, like that's, that's why I, I 
I tend to go towards old world wines because that's the flavor I want from them. I don't yeah. feel like I grew up on Long Island. That none of the Long Island wines have that earthiness. Well, dirt, all in that is, let me tell you something. If you take a grape, right, Merlot grape, right? If you take a Merlot grape in, uh, in France, in Bordeaux region, right, it's very small, right? And if you take the same Merlot grapes in Napa, it's twice the size. They're giant, yeah. Yeah, but you know why it's twice the size? Because because you have to constantly water and sprinkle it, right? And and the, and the, 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 the grape sees a lot of water, it becomes bigger, right? Yeah. But when you squeeze the grape in Bordeaux, which is half the size, you get smell, you can smell the juice, you can feel the, the, the viscosity of the juice. It's little, but it's powerful. Yet, when you squeeze the grape in Napa, you see tons of juice coming up, but the mm -hmm. juice doesn't have that smell. It doesn't have that viscosity, right? Because it's overpowered, over water. And of, of course, you know, all of our water through irrigation has chlorine in them and other stuff in them that gets, gets fed into the leaf. So that's why in order to grow a good tobacco, you have to grow it in the region. Same in order to grow good wine, you have to grow it in the region that there is plenty of moisture where God is watering your plants, not human being with chlorine water, right? Because you can actually taste that chlorine in the leaf. If, if I was going to make an over-under bet, I would have totally lost today on how long it would have taken Paul to say that his wife was a level two sommelier. <laughs> I didn't say level two. I just said whatever. You have to throw that in any moment. You can. We oh, we oh, enjoy oh. wine when we have somebody on the show that enjoys wine. I get oh, I get excited. I'm just shocked. I just... You haven't thrown that out there yet. I mean, I totally. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, just, uh, she doesn't. Uh, she doesn't practice her. anymore. She she doesn't practice anymore. She I, just I think buys wine. Too intimidated to say it because <laughs> Zai is another family. So I maybe he just didn't want to look like you know, <laughs> he got intimidated. So <laughs> that's funny. So you, you you acquire various tobaccos and then you put it all together and and, and do your processing in Costa Rica. Yeah, we, we you know we have our own plantation, uh, but we use less than seven percent of our own crops, right? Because the rest of the crops we feel is not is not is not good for us to use, right? Uh, we're not like other we're not like other companies that basically take every leaf from our crop and make roll a cigar on it and just you know ship it out we we look at each leaf literally we look at each leaf before this process to the next line right means fermentation right so we use seven percent of our crop but where where the strength of our company comes we're not puru where we're not using one region tobacco because if you use all nicaraguan one region tobacco dominic republic or ecuador or 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 uh, or others because it's all from same family, same soil, same area, you don't get the structure because you want tobacco to be fighting with each other. Same as the grapes. When we use different grapes together to make wine, one of the reason French grape, another reason French grapes is better, uh, French wine is better than American wine because American wine use single grapes, right? Mm -hmm. Single grape, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon or Cabernet Franc or Merlot, right? In France, we use combination of multiple grapes, right? Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, we mix them together. When we mix these three grapes together, they have different chemistry, different sugar, different uh, acidity in it. They fight with each other. When they fight with each other in the bottle, that's what creates a structure. When you see the line on the glass, that's called structure. And that structure is the when legs. these grapes are fighting with each other. So we find the best cigars in the world are the one that you can actually take, take tobacco from best region of the world and mix them together in order to create one complicated flavor and taste. Extremely interesting. Where, want... where is your plantation? Both are in, um, uh, we have two in our Costa Rica near our factory, but we use most of our plantation, uh, not for utilizing the tobacco, but to do experiment. We do a lot of experiments with the leaf. We do a lot of experiments with the leaf. For example, we do a lot of genetic formation of the seed. Okay? For example, uh, 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 most of the growers of tobacco in the world, no matter where they are, uh, they use Cuban seeds, right? For a lot of obvious reasons. It's the oldest seeds. It genetically, it is a complicated seed, and we like to take that seed and plant it and grow it, right? But when you take that Cuban seed and grow it everywhere in the world, 
you don't get the same leaf that you would get from the same seed if it was planted in Cuba. Because the soil is different, the geography is different, the altitude is different, the moisture and sun level is different. So we try to genetically re-engineer that seed in order to make a perfect seed for a perfect plant. We do all those experimentation in our plantation, our factories in Costa Rica. Wow. It's a complicated process, you know. Cigar is not, if you look at cigar, you know, uh, you like I had the other day my landscaper uh, running after me uh, saying, Mr. Yonan, Mr. Yonan. I say, yeah, yes, Raul. He says, oh, here, take this gift from me. I said, what is this, Raul? He says, it's my cigar. I'm making cigar. Wow. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> I said, interesting, Raul. Don't, don't quit your daytime job because you're not going to far, go far making cigars, right? Uh, okay. But you can't just call a factory anywhere in the world, slap your name on it, and call yourself a cigar maker, right? A cigar maker is the one that originates the seed, feels the seed, touch the seed, digs it deep into a soil and see that seed grows and can recall the history of that plant from the time it was born to the time it was packed. You just eliminated about half the people who have gotten in the industry in the last five years. Excuse yeah, me. <laughs> because, because if you don't follow that regime, how do you know what product you have in your hand? How do you know that? How do you know how would people proceed the cigar making. The problem with cigar making industry is that, you know, there are too many people in it. There's over 3,850 cigar labels in a market, right? Everybody's cigar maker, including my landscaper. And, <laughs> and it, has, it has distracted the actual people who smoke cigar from the true brand that delivers the flavor the heritage, the quality, and the software that takes your mind, connects it to your heart, and you can feel your soul together. It's funny um, because I've used that expression. I, I, I we down here in Florida, it's really abundant. We had guys who are line cooks last month who come in and show me their new cigar line. So it, it's crazy, but it's funny in this era in the last probably decade. I really believe that there should be a new title because everybody, you know, takes a title, you know, cigar maker or whatever. And I think there just needs to be a new moniker just called brand maker. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, <laughs> right. No, no, I mean, I mean, being dead serious, there's a lot of people who are brand makers. No, I mean, I mean, hey, in this, in this uh, PCA show that we were there just last month or month before that, and uh, uh, as I'm walking from the PCA to my hotel room or anything, Hundreds of people will run toward me. Mr. Yona, Mr. Yona, my name is so-and-so. I'm a cigar maker. I want you to taste my cigar, right? And, 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 and you know, everybody's cigar makers. And, and, and uh, uh, you know, in the PCA show, I saw the chef. Uh, 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 he was introducing his cigars. Football players introducing their cigars. Uh, gymnastic player introducing their cigars. A doctor, dentist introducing his own cigars. Everybody cigar makers in the world. And yet, 99% of those people don't know the fundamental and the chemistry and the physics and the culture and the soul and the process of cigar making. Randy Bush's comment is pretty on point. Too many brand owners are not really cigar makers, just customers of cigar makers. <laughs> I think they are face. I think they are. I don't know what they are, to be honest with you. Listen. Uh, 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 when, when I go to plantation, which is often, and I feel the soil, right? And I grab the soil and I analyze it myself, right? From smelling it, sometimes eating small part of it, believe it or not. Um, wow. Um, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's very important, including in winemaking. And sometimes to put in it in special equipment, that measures the mineral in the soil, right? Magnesium level, prosperous, iron, iron fiber, right? And then, and then taking a piece of the leaf, right? Analyzing the leaf to make sure the leaf picked up those components from the soil beneath it. If it did, you say, wow, everything's working well. If it didn't say, why this leaf didn't pick those minerals? What was wrong? 
Was the leaf too top, too high on the surface? Did the roots penetrate it inside or were they on the surface, right? Was it water too much? Was it not water too much? Was it sun? Was the leaf at the top blocking the sun on the leaves at the bottom? Because sometimes what we do, we remove the leaves at the top in order bottom one get enough sun. Otherwise, the leaf at the top chill the bottom leaves. And remember, the flavor and the structure of the cigar comes from the bottom, middle and bottom leaf, not the top leaf. So the most important leaf are killed by less important leaf because that's on the top. The sun comes from the top. The top leaf provides shade for the bottom leaf and the bottom leaves don't pick the minerals from the sun. You need the minerals from the sun. Otherwise the oil, the oil is too strong. It will leave the obnoxious taste in your mouth when you're smoking a cigar. This is just a small component of the science of cigar making. How many people know it? How many people follow it? That's a different story, right? But when you put the cigar in your mouth, when a person sells a cigar, they have an obligation. This is a food, literally a food. People put the cigar in their mouth, right? You have an obligation to follow a strict guidelines of manufacturing a product that people use, that people feel, that goes in their mouth, in their systems, right? Like we were the first people in the entire cigar industry. Now, remember, cigar industry is 500 years old, technically 500 years old, right? Since Christopher Columbus founded, when he discovered Americas, right? Till now, right? El Septimo was the first one that came with report. I don't know if you guys seen it last month. That said, a national nicotine actually is not harmful for you. A natural nicotine that you get from smoking a good cigar, not any cigar, but good cigar, is the same nicotine that you find in tomato, in potato, in eggplant, in green pepper, in teas. Now, when you say good cigar, you may esteem it. I'm assuming you're talking about premium cigars, not machine-made cigars. I'm talking about premium cigars, right? Because premium cigars is a the premium cigars does not mean premium cigars does not mean is a good quality cigar. Premium when you are categorizing the premium cigars. It means many things. One of the important things means is a long filler, right? Just a leaf, not take all the craps from the floor, scoop them down with the vacuum and put them in there to, to get a heavy weight. Because remember, cigar is sold by weight, right? Yes. Cigar is sold by weight, right? So they try to fill them with anything and roll them up, right? That's why when you smoke a cigar, you got all stuff coming inside of your mouth. It's all from the short filler that comes in, in there, right? So that's number one. Second, there is a special rules and requirement um, uh, for growing a tobacco that if you follow, you fall in that category of the premium cigar. Third is a use of pesticides and um, uh, chemicals because from the time that you plant the seed into the ground to the time you pick the leaf, in average in the industry, they use 200 applications of fertilizer and pesticides. Oof. Yeah, 200, 200 applications. Because nicotine plant is very sensitive, and uh, if, if it gets a disease, at 5 p.m., you wake up in the morning, 30% of your crops be gone. Have, is gone. Exactly. But, and that's another reason we ferment them in a high altitude, so we don't use pesticides, fertilize. It's a natural grown leaf that you can actually consume. And again, if, you, if you're an average one or two cigar smoker a day, you have same level of nicotine in your blood as an average 10 years old kid that never smoked a cigar. Because 10 years old kid eats French fries, eats tomato on pizza and pasta and salad, eggplant, green pepper, and they all have nicotine in it. Okay, so this is one hell of a statement that I really haven't heard before. What, what, where, where is this information coming from? I mean, is this- well, why, don't you, why don't you Google right now, does, Red tomato have nicotine in it. Google if potato has nicotine in it. Eggplant, green pepper, green. No, yeah, that, that's a factual statement. Tomatoes, yeah, potatoes, yeah, I, green pepper. No, I've I, heard I, tomatoes and potatoes. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I understand, but I mean the fact that smoking one or two cigars a day would give you the same nicotine hey, level. There, hey, there was a report. Uh, uh, we're gonna email it to you. It was emailed, I believe, to all of the retailers. I I don't know why you didn't get it. 
but in the report has referenced all the scientific study done by Harvard, Columbia, Oxford, many other university, all reference data in it is in that report, the level of nicotine, including how much nicotine is an average size tomato and so forth. And so nicotine and natural nicotine, right? Not chemical, natural nicotine has been part of our diet for millions of years, right? From beginning of the time, right? So it's a part of our diet, right? Um, uh, a natural nicotine that found in a premium cigar um, uh, reduces uh, a frequency of Alzheimer's or progression of Alzheimer's. Dementia reduce the frequency or occurrence of a heart attack, stroke. The reason is the natural nicotine dilates your artery. When your artery are dilated, more oxygen and blood flows to every part of your body. For example, as you get older, my age, the doctor always say to you, make sure you, you eat, you drink one baby aspirin a day. Why do they say that? Because it thin, thin is your blood. So you don't, mm -hmm. it reduces the frequency of strokes or heart attack. Well, if you smoke a premium cigar, a good cigar, you don't have to take the baby aspirin anymore because the dilates your artery, more blood and oxygen flows to all your organs and you stay healthier. Read that report that, El, and again, El Septimo is the first company in the world in 500 years, 500 years, nobody has done that except El Septimo. It shows the sophistication level of this brand. Came up with 40 page report, all reference scientific research done by major universities that describes all of these benefits of natural iniquity. Hmm. Super interesting. Um, I want to talk about the trade show this year because you were at one of a destination point for many, many, many people. Um, people were coming to take photographs with these set of lighters that you made caused a lot of excitement, I guess, in the year's trade show. Do we have a photo of it, guys? Can we put it up there? Yeah, I have a couple of them, yeah. Put it up there. Well, let's talk about this set, Zaya. This, these were tabletop torch lighters, an exquisite collection, and the retail on the set was $5 million? Yeah, let me let me tell you, yeah, five and a half million dollars. By the way, all three sold, all three sold within 10 minutes of the show. But let me tell you what the story of this is. Um, uh, uh, I contacted, without mentioning any name, one of the biggest brands in the world that makes lighters, right? And I said, hey, listen, let's do a joint venture together. I want to create a lighter for our brand. I want to create it because I'm, a des I'm an engineer. I'm a designer. I don't need anybody to do anything for me. I can do it myself, right? I said, I want you to make it. Oh, Mr. Yonan, we don't do stuff like that. Oh, you don't? Okay, great. You know what? I'm going to design it. I'm going to make it myself. <laughs> but when I wanted to make my first lighter, I wanted, first of all, I didn't, I didn't think these lighters are going to sell, nor I was thinking they're going to sell. I thought I'm going to display them for the show, and then after that, I'm going to take all the jewels apart, and then basically what I'm losing is the cost of making them, because everything else is, the gold is perishable, I can sell it, this, the stones are, I bought them, I can sell them, no big deal, right? Yeah. So I said, okay, you don't want to work with me, no problem, I don't need you. We are El Septima. We're going to make our own lighters, but I'm not just going to make any lighters. I'm going to make a lighter that has never, ever been made in the history of the world. A lighter that is beautiful, functional, big, expensive. A lighter that captivates your mind and your soul. To this day, it's been a month and a half past PCA. People say we, every day we have an image of your lighter in our head. Matter of fact, the same people that said no to me to make the lighter, they were in our booth seven times taking picture. I said, guys, don't hide yourself. Come take picture, grab it, touch it, light it, take it to your booth, enjoy it, right? So the purpose was to show people the strength of the brand, not only in imagination and design, but execution, which we did. But funny thing is they show open 10 o'clock 9.30, we had a call. We sold all three to two different buyer collectors, one in the Middle East, one in Europe. I was going to say, they went to end consumers, yeah. They were consumers, yeah. Well, one, we don't know who they were. They didn't disclose their name. It was done to their attorney. The other one is a, 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 one of the El Satimo customers for 15 years in Dubai. He bought one, and he said he likes to keep it. It's an investment. Those lighters, 
what they pay for is five and a half million. If they take it to the jeweler, say, I want to sell this, the cost of the stone and the gold. These lighters have 1,000 to 1,500 grams of pure gold. Wow. They have 100 to 200 carats of the actual precious stone in it. And they're six inches to eight inches tall. So they're not, they're desktop lighters. They're not a handheld lighters. Right. No, I actually got to hold one. They're, yeah. they're... Oh, did you? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what we did, what we did. I never had $5 million in my hand ever. Exactly. We had all of the people in PCA come in, grab them, touch them, take a picture, feel them, and light their cigar because we wanted people to light a cigar with five and a half million dollars lighter. And and again, the whole purpose of it was to show people who we are because that's really important thing for me. It's not an ego thing. It is a payback for your hard work. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, millions of people smoke our cigars today, Saturday. The joy we get is how much they enjoy smoking our product. So we want to show people that this is a huge brand, significant level of sophistication and capabilities, and is a brand that you're going to see growing every day in this country. By the way, we are the fastest growing cigar brand in the United States for the past six months in a row, every month. Casey, Casey Aldamandi says, I hold five million in my hands nightly. I'm pretty sure he's talking about his genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I got I got I got sidetracked off of that comment. So wait, let me ask you, Zaya, do you have one of the lighters? Did you make one for yourself? No, the the you know, a funny thing is I made three and I figured I'm gonna keep one, put them in El Septimo Museum because we're opening up the museum in Los Angeles. And we're opening up a lounge, not lounge to compete with other customers' lounge, but a lounge that people can come see the history of El Satino. It's a 10,000 square foot museum. So I wanted to keep one for our museum, but they're all three sold. But we just commissioned the jewelers to make three more. Oh. And, and we're going to make three more. And uh, uh, we're going to let people, you know, move them around, use them, play with them. Uh, um, we like that. We we enjoy at the at the museum. Them. That's what it'll people will be able it'll, to actually it will be at light the a museum, cigar with them. Yeah, it would be at the museum, and the same reasons we we will have the you know um, all my life I've been searching to make a perfect cigar, a cigar that is perfect by all standards, not based on certain person's tasting requirement or certain person's rating. Because I tell you something, rating cigar it is ridiculous. I laugh at I laugh at when people rate cigars. I just laugh at them. I think the best way to rate a cigar is put it in your mouth. If you like it, it's a cigar for you. If you don't like it, change it. You don't need to have somebody else tell you what spaghetti to eat, what what wine to drink. We're not children. Everybody effective today should forget about other people's review. Other people's review is for themselves, not for us. We all have different tastes. We all have different profile. We all sophisticated enough to know what we like and what we don't like. And the best review is put the product in your mouth, see if you enjoy it. If you enjoy it, buy it again. If you don't enjoy it, go to a different brand. Simple as that, right? Truth. Hashtag truth. Um, you, you, Abe's been saying that. Yeah, we've, I, we've said that before. I've always if said If you it. like well, it, you we, like it. One of the reasons why we don't ever get into the cigar reviewing process on our show or it's just, uh, for me, that's a pointless, for me personally. That's pointless because I think everybody tastes everything differently. I just want to express and let our listeners see the quality of even your leather goods. Um, this is the purse. Look, look at the quality of this purse. It's an amazing looking purse that Septimo makes. Now, these, That's gorgeous. These purses, uh, gorgeous. Yeah. These are alligator skin. And these purses, next generation, these purses are coming out. They have a humidor built in in it. Humidor built in <laughs> because... So, because always when a wife and a husband travel, they always wonder, how are we going to carry this cigar? Where do we put them? And in the case of a husband, he always tell his wife, Annie, could you put this in Can your Can you pack? hold this for me? Exactly. Yeah, always. So, always. so, the next generation, all of these beautiful purses, which are 44 centimeter long, they're the longest purses in the world today, um, uh, longer than Hermes, longer than Louis Vuitton or Chanel, they will have a humidor in it that you can actually store your... Uh, uh, cigars and accessories. 
What uh, is the actual brand of the of the leather goods? What what are they? It's El Septimo. It's designed okay. by okay. It's designed by El Septimo team in in Paris, and is built by El Septimo team in Netherlands. It's sold in Netherlands. Wow. This makes me nervous seeing this and you saying that it's a longer. My wife has a taste for Louis Vuitton. I'm oh, this she's not this, watching right now. Yeah, you know, I met I'm, I I met a Louis Vuitton chairman and 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 you know in a function in Paris. And as we were walking away from each other, he says, "By the way, nice purse." I said, Thank you. <laughs> "Wow." Yeah, yeah. Before we my get, wife, you know, my my wife is, is is she she ignites creativity in my mind because. I love my wife a lot. I married her 35 years ago. And every time I see her, she grab it with grab with gravitate toward the product. I become jealous. I feel like I have to be the one to create that product for her. Like, for example, winemaker, we winemaker, we never make white wine because white wine is easy to make. A professional red winemaker will never make a white wine. It's beneath us to make white wine. But, <laughs> but I saw my wife one day, she started transitioning to drinking white wine early on. So I said, well, okay, then now I am forced to make white wine because I don't want my <laughs> wife to be drinking somebody else's wine. So we made white wine, which actually it became first price this year, um, first price in the world, a big petal cheval blanc. And um, 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 so, uh, so when we get excited about something, nothing can stop us. Not a nuclear bomb can stop us. We're going to get done what we need to get done because we are also a team. And brought away... This is just the beginning. We've been here in the United States for a year and a half. Wait to see what you're going to see next year. I mean, if you think you just saw something interesting with the cigars, with the lighters, with the purses, wait till you see what we have in plan for consumers in the coming months. It's going to blow your mind away. We're going to change this industry. We're going to, we're going to set it right and thank and thank God for allowing us to do it after 500 years of following the same goddamn thing we did every day. Some people say, we look at the past and we make the future cigar. That is the most idiot statement anybody can make. Past is a past. Human has to evolve, has to make new things. If we were constantly looking at the past, we wouldn't be driving cars. We'd still be riding horses. We got to look forward, future, to create something that create excitement, new experience for consumers. Well, I just want to let all our fans out there know um, all of the El Septimo products are on smoking.com. The new to the humidor code, new 22, will save you 10%. You can use it. Uh, know we've been giving all the new products and becoming in that code, new 22. We'll work on El Septimo because I see some of the comments about people wanting to buy it and check it out. Might as well save yourself. That'll be good this whole weekend. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. That code's going on is, I don't know. How, how is that set up, Alex? What, how, how long are the codes good for on the new products? For about a week? Um, That code is good for, yeah, the, about the next seven days. Okay, perfect. Uh, it's we'll buy it this weekend. Get yeah. it out of the way. Buy it now. <laughs> so, delivery coming in. Paul. Is that what that is, a delivery? That's yeah. hilarious. So um, let's say, well, before we get on with Coop, I just want to ask, that's a seven, is that right. correct? And what right. what is what is the symbol or the meaning behind yeah. that? That, it, that yeah, yeah. El Septimo means in Spanish the seventh, right? L E L is da. Right. Septimo means seven. And um, as you know, human has God has God created God created heaven and earth in seven days, uh. and created for human a seven sense. And he when we reach our seven sense. When we experience something phenomenal, a relationship, a food, a drink, that it basically it connects all the components of our brain. We have extraordinary level of joy. And we say, wow, I reached my seventh sense uh, drinking this wine or smoking this cigar. So seven means uh, El Septimo means seven. And the seven means with our product, uh, you're supposed to be reaching and feeling your seventh sense. Which is the best sense that God has created in all of us. Okay. Oh, well, there you have it. All right. Well, it's that time to get our favorite KMA contributor on to see what is going on in the industry with the scoop with Coop. Hey, yo, what's my theme music? The scoop with Coop. Breaking industry news. Hear it first on KMA Talk Radio and cigar coop.com. Yeah. 
Cooper. There he is. Good, good morning. Good morning. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How about you? Hey, another week in paradise. Did you get a chance to hold the five million dollar lighter? Five point five. I didn't, but my team did. I keep dropping I, the five like it's fifty. They, cents. They, my my team 5. did 5. get to hold it. Yeah. You, you did or did not? I did not personally, but the, the other guys uh, on my team did. Uh, I was dealing with a, a an issue off the trade show floor when they were at the booth. Uh, yep. I think I'm trying to remember because you know I worked I worked at Tiffany on Fifth Avenue. I'm trying to remember the most expensive piece that I've ever held. But five million maybe more. It's the scariest feeling in the world. And I broke I broke a three and a half million dollar necklace one time. You've heard the story. But I, it was like yeah. a rite of passage. It was a rite of passage. Everybody broke it. It's funny. It's only a matter of time where things either lead back to Tiffany's or it's Tiffany being a sommelier in, in, in most of I, 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 Or Broadway. I just, you know, things, it's life oh, experience. Or Disney World. Off Broadway. Oh, I never got to Broadway. Broadway. All right, Cooper. What's the scoop this week, my friend? What's going on? This one, I, I'm like, I always love to get Abe's reaction to a story. I don't think we've talked about this one, but um, La Florida Minicana, okay, is uh, releasing a cigar called the Golden Bull, which is a Lonsdale size of the Andalusian Bull. But the catch is to get this cigar, you're going to have to purchase an NFT, a non fungible token, right? That cigar right there? Yep. Yes, I, yeah, the, I, and I have one too. I, I got one at the show, but um, what they're doing is they're having an auction that's going to end um, the first. Actually, the first of these NFTs is being auctioned right now. It ends in 15 minutes, and there's bidding going on uh, for the right to purchase that NFT. If you get that NFT, you can purchase up to 70 Andalusian Bull Golden Bulls a month. As of 11:30, the bidding hit $63,777. Yep. So, like people are asking me what what this is. It's kind of like it's, a personal it's currently, license. It's, it's currently at sixty four thousand seven hundred seventy seven. That's yeah. That's the, yeah. That's to get the next bid in. Yep. So. Oh, that's a current uh, minimum bid. You're right. Yeah, it's a current. Where but, did I, I heard Lido? I heard Lido talking about this on. I think on Fred was it possibly on Fred Ruiz series that he's doing online. He he went into yeah yeah he had it. He's been they've been talking bit. about it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, um, this is actually a Tony Gomez project. Uh, it was Tony Gomez's brainchild. I, I'm glad. I'm glad that Zai is actually on the show because I'd like to ask him because you know it's one of these things yeah. where I just can't fathom people buying real estate in the metaverse. I still can't figure out Bitcoin. Um, it 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 it's mind boggling. And who sent me that article? Is that you, Alex? About Mark Cuban? How he used to say everybody. Um... I think Briggs sent that article. Yeah, anybody who, who got into this is just, he's just stupid. He doesn't understand, but yet he invested in a company that sold like four hundred million dollars in real estate in the metaverse. How, how do you? I mean, as a guy who's kind of been on the cutting edge of advancement and technology, and you know, obviously you have a pulse on where the world's going. How do you feel about this stuff, Zaya? You know, uh, uh, it's funny. I think sometimes people imagination for profit has advanced so much in this country that they could sell something that doesn't exist right so my philosophy has always been <laughs> if i can understand something if someone has to explain something to me more than 10 seconds definitely <laughs> something i'm not interested to own okay. because right. because i've seen this before you know, it doesn't make sense to me in many categories how things work, and uh, and uh, uh, it could be one of those games that when the music stops, there are three chairs and thirty people standing. That's so, that's what I've been saying about this whole thing forever. Yeah. You know, well, I, I, I if if I don't understand something, I stay away from it. I mean, look, the nice part about this is is that because Alec, we were just having this debate in my office, right? It's like the the it's like having a picture of a van gogh on the internet and looking at it and actually having the real van gogh in your office right there's a difference but for me it's all digital so i don't know where the real part comes exactly. in if you own an nft so yeah. I, I i my brain can't wrap around it i know people are going to make millions on it but it's, someone's going to be left holding the bag at some point. Re, re, uh, remember something uh the people who gonna Making millions of it, those millions are made from the people who lost those millions. 
Of course. Right. Millions, right. millions are not just millions just are not created in the air, thin air, right? Every time someone made money on something like that, I means somebody lost money. So the question is, who's the lucky guy who's gonna sit on the three chairs before all the other 30 sits, right? And for that reason, I stay away from it, you know. I, I, I always said this: you, you either, you're either the food or you're the eater in these kind That's of true. setup, right? Yeah. But obviously, very few people get to be the eater. Most of the people end up being the food. But the nice part about this thing is they're attaching it with something tangible and physical, you know, yeah, physical, which you get this humidor and you get these cigars you can't really buy, and then you get the opportunity to buy it again. So at least in this scenario, it's more than just buying some piece of digital art that you could look at like everybody else could look at. But the only difference is you could say you own it. I, I, I don't get it, but. Yeah, and the second one I think is starting right after the first one. Is that right, Coop? That's correct. Yes, it's a series of seven of them. Right. Yeah. So uh, they're doing them sequentially, I guess. But you so, know, this is yeah, this is the first one, so it's interesting to see what, what number one goes for. You know, it's it's interesting because I, I think manufacturers are just starting to figure out. They're trying to find every little way to sell something directly to a consumer. And, you know, it's, it's funny, Abe. Don't forget your train of thought. They spend so much time being innovating, trying to do exactly what you said, and they don't spend enough time on the product itself. I think they should spend that time and energy on the product itself than trying to be creative on the gimmick of marketing that few people understand, others don't, and it takes away from the product, right? Well, I could definitely say that's true for some companies. Um, oh, I forgot where I was even going with this topic. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. It happens all the time. But, um, you know, at least they get the cigar. It's going to be interesting to see how this happens. Um, um, I forgot. Anyways, what else you got going on, Coop? A couple of cigars are shipped this week uh, that were uh, launched at the trade show that I think are more noteworthy. The first one is Manolo Casada's 75th anniversary cigar. Uh, actually, it was for his 75th birthday. Um, that cigar is en route to stores. He was actually signing the boxes they showed this week. So we should start seeing those cigars probably on the shelves towards the end of the month. It's a limited 1200 box release, um, that comes in a six and three quarter by 48 size, which is kind of that almost Churchill size. Um, uh, so look for that cigar, uh, on the shelves soon. I did not smoke that cigar yet. All right. And. And one other noteworthy release, it was a light week, but uh, one of the uh, more high-profile Tatuaje cigars has started to ship. It is the Tatuaje Vertiku Blue, um, which is uh, – I've actually smoked that cigar. It's in two sizes, a 6 and a quarter by 52 and a 5 and a half by 54. I've smoked both. Very good cigar. It's a, it's a really good cigar. I think people are going to like it. Uh, it's highlighted by a shade-grown Nicaraguan Corojo wrapper being grown by the Garcias. So, uh, in fact, Pete Johnson kind of called this a Garcia Puro in that all the tobaccos were not only in Nicaragua and they were from the Garcia farm. So, um, I believe this one has already started to hit the shelves. Um, if not, it should be hitting the shelves very soon. Uh, before you go on, I just remember what I was going to talk about. So, it, it's interesting because manufacturers, I think, are always trying to find the way to go directly to consumers. So, here they'll be selling these 70 cigars directly to either the retailer or consumer who buys it. But, you know, if you do the math on this, right? Um, if the if the remaining NFTs sell for an average of twenty five thousand, say each, right, you're going to have basically almost four hundred thousand dollars in pretty much pure profit. I, I'm just I, I just want <laughs> to I just want to see how many companies will follow up on the attempt to do this because that's just a silly number, you know, um, over seven days and, and for what so. I, I'm afraid of the trend that may occur. You know, the question, Abe, is going to be on, on demand with this, right? So let's say someone gets this for $70,000, right? They could probably, if, let's say a retailer gets it. They could probably sell that, try to sell that humidor for $70,000. And then I think they're going to try to sell these cigars at a ridiculous price um, as well. If the question is, will the market respond to it? That, that's gonna be. I don't know if the I don't know if the cigar market's ready. I mean, Zaya's product. There's certainly a space in the luxury market for. We know that, but I mean, if the, if they try to sell this cigar for hundred hundred and fifty dollars, that that that's a that's insane. I think you know when. All right, I'll have the regular Andalusian Blue for sixteen dollars. 
Yeah, it would be very interesting to watch how it goes out. But that's what I was going to mention before. Any other yeah. news you got going on this week? That's it. It was a light week. Light week for up-to-date news and check it all, always out. Rumor-free, teaser-free. Please check out cigar-coop.com. As always, interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, and as always, it's time for Tale of the Tape. This is season, was it five? Man, season it's going five. Back. Season five, and we're in week number three. So it's time to find out this season's topic, top movie villains of all time. Let's run it. That intro gives me chills. I love it, but every time I see my face, (laughs) and that's like one of the outtakes from the great smoke pictures that we took, where I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, why is that picture being used? All right, so let's get it rolling. Uh, Here we go, top 10. Let's start with the new guys first. Abe? All right, uh, my top 10 this week is the infamous Hans Gruber. Love it. Die Hard. Um, Solid. It got to be solid. Listen, it, it, when writers write, it's they're usually typically trying to write a strong hero, you know. And a lot of times, it's not easy to make a strong hero an equally strong bad guy. You know, Hans was a classic bad guy, but he never had that like I'm an idiot moment that most villains have when you know they get taken over. He was constantly forward thinking, problem solving. Um, and overcoming any obstacle that McLean kept throwing at him. Um, and I, I don't see enough, whether intended or not, it's become an iconic holiday movie. And uh, Hans Gruber had to make my list in the top 10. Paul, take it away. <laughs> uh, hitting up or so hitting up my list is uh, the infamous, almost as infamous Queen of Hearts from Alice oh in Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! This is not three in a just, row. He's so brutal. This, 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 this. Just, just kind of uh, pure evil as Alice just tries to make her way through Wonderland, uh, painting the roses red. <laughs> the 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 epitome of the monarch who has uh, who has done everything to make herself happy and doesn't care about the peasants. Queen of Hearts, Alice in Wonderland. All right, coming in for me is Calvin Candy of uh, Django Unchained. I mean, listen, if we were doing if we were doing top scumbags in movie history, this guy's top two or three. Um, Just a role so well played, masterfully played by Leonardo DiCaprio, but just such a crud guy. It's almost got to be hard to play to be that awful of a person. Really made the watcher hate him. Right. Right. When you can pull right. that emotion of hatred out so deep, right. it was hard to watch him and not really genuinely hate him. Most villains, especially great villains, on some level you kind of like them, you know? Yeah. Hate yeah. this guy. Cool. All right. Uh well, I kind of blew it this week because I accidentally leaked it to everybody, but uh No, you just think it's us. Yeah, I looked it to you guys. Us. I looked it to you guys, but yeah, because we do like to have a little element of surprise. And boy, Alice in Wonderland's top the surprise. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, this is like the first repeat one we have. But I have Annie Wilkes from Misery uh, by Kathy Bates. Um, just just a great like villain. And I look, I I kind of you notice a little trend. I tend to go for these psychological type of, of thriller villains. And, I, and I, I'm not the biggest Kathy Bates fan, but this was a, an outstanding role she had. And if you go back to the early 90s when this came out, this, there were a lot of those type of psychological thriller movies that were coming out. And I mentioned Cape Fear last week. so. Right. Um, but I think that was, that was a great, great villainous. Absolutely. One of my picks as well. Zaya, yeah. are you a movie guy? Do you like movies? Yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, I was just thinking while you guys were talking. And uh, one thing that comes to my mind is the movie I constantly watch, The Patriot, right? Oh, yeah. old school. Yeah. yeah. Old yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there was a guy there. He was a, a British colonel, William, uh, what was his last name? Uh, Tamington, William Tamington, who was a bad guy, right? He was yeah, a guy. Oh, uh, a great villain. 
And uh, every so often, I felt like I could get into the TV and shoot this guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watch movie once in a while. I love I love watching uh, old classical movies. Yeah. All right. Well, that's Tale of the Tape, week number three of season five. Join us next week. There's our full list, composite list of all our picks. Let's see. Anybody double? Any Wilkes is on there already twice. Yeah, that's it so that's far. That's it. That's it. You think anybody will double me? No. 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 I don't think anyone will are have Are you any guys not friends. including are you guys not including animated films? Well, I don't know if you weren't here for week one, but CGI no. and animated didn't make my list. Although Maybe otherwise either. probably Thanos would have made it um as an all-time huh. villain. But there had to be an element of real acting me acting in, you know in, in my picks. I agree. That, I was only, that. that was only my personal criteria. Well, my you know, we could see next week. We still have so many more to go. Where you're gonna you, your picks will be in the maybe kid, I'll break Captain Hook still on the list by the way. Oh, Captain Hook probably be his number one. Be yeah, no. <laughs> of KMA Talk Radio. Oh, wait, has uh, Abe seen my top? Abe hasn't seen my top ten, my list, right? Alex, you have nobody, my full I, list. I, I, I give, I give Alex. Oh, do you I, not? I thought I gave Alex I, the full I text list. You guys every day, every week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I okay, give I thought I, I thought I gave you the top list. Okay. By the way, anybody okay. watching uh, some breaking news? Always watch KMA. You'll get here first Monday. We will have our link up for the first block of group great rooms for the Great Smoke. Um, you know, the, last year they sold out super fast. The group rate will be up. The rooms are $119 a night. I think last year during the great smoke, the same rooms got upwards of $250 or over $200 for sure. Yeah, so if not more, yeah. So take advantage of the group rate. We'll have the link up sometime on Monday. Just giving everybody a heads up because they will go fast. Um, and that's one location. We'll probably have to go to the second location. Uh, once the first block of rooms sells out, so that's very- that's crazy low though. Where in South Florida? Where anywhere around here can you get a room for under two hundred dollars a night? In, that's in, in in February and March. Yeah, that's unbelievably. That's low. like high time. And also just yeah. a, little, a little teaser. See, I'm, I'm not like Coop. I'm a teaser guy. I love it. <laughs> one of our uh, oh, what's that? One of our swag pieces for the for the Great Smoke Mardi Gras Madness bottle. That's cool. That, cool. that is cool. That is really cool. 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 That is nice. Very heavy duty too. Very best cool. sweat, best swag, man. Every year, Abe, you guys. We work on it all year, Coop. We work on it all year. Yeah. I might have to. I might. I might have to reach out to Zaya maybe for some idea help. He comes up with some really good stuff too. So, as we close every show, uh, we have our good friends over at Gurkha Cigars who sponsor uh, one of my favorite segments of the show. It's time to ask Mr. Zaya. Would he rather? So this segment's a lot simpler, Zaya. It's sponsored by Gurkha Cigars. Um, basically, we're just going to ask you three questions. Okay. And uh, you just have to tell us which one would you rather. Are you ready, sir? Absolutely. Okay. First question. <laughs> would you rather win a million dollars or flip a coin for $10 million? Flip a coin for $10 million. <laughs> how about how about the rest of you guys? Would you take a million? Listen, you we're in a different situation. I'm in a way yeah, different, different situation than bracket, bro. I'll take the million and run. <laughs> yeah, I would take the million. Yeah, me too. Nope. Me Everybody. too. <laughs> all right, flips for ten. Would you rather lose all your wealth or lose one of your senses? Lose all my Ooh. wealth. Because I can always get the wealth back with my senses. There you go. Huh. Good answer. Good answer. I right actually in. knew you would say that. As I, as I break the questions or pick them out, I said that's exactly what he's going to say. Having having spoken to him as much as we have today, it, it's a yeah. That's a I can guess that that's what he would have said. Yeah. Here's here's one he may actually. The first two are kind of easy for him. Here's one that you might have to think about for a little bit. Would you rather know how you will die or when you will die? Frankly, neither. But uh, you had when, to pick one. But but, but when when did <laughs> I, that's the one that is important because because I have to make sure I gotta invent my next creation before I go so people remember. Right. <laughs> right? I, I actually was thinking about this one for a while. I think I would rather know how. 
Uh, I don't think I so. I don't man. know. Yeah. Because what if it's like awful? With living, you know, yeah, what, what what living about, with. Yeah. What, what about if, if you, you were driving a car? Then you stop. Yeah. What if it's completely right? awful? Right. That's true. But Everywhere I, you drive, you're yeah. gonna not drive. So I think if you know how you die, you at least can be conscious, or maybe to avoid it. Avoid. <laughs> Yeah, Listen, but if you, but if you, you can't not, change fate. But I think it's too much. Right, right. I think it's too much pressure knowing when you're gonna die. I agree with that because every day leading up to that. But I guess you know, you could also make the argument that every day leading up to that day, you when you know you're going to die, you're gonna make the best out of every day because you know you have X amount of days. There's a set amount of time that you have to get your goals accomplished in. Okay, so it, let there's me, never let, that. I have all the time in the world. Okay, let me simplify the feeling for you, Paul, and see how you answer. Right? <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, no. I'm just, just curious. You have a pistol at your head. You have a choice. A guy could put a ten minute timer on. Well, you know, at the end of ten minutes, the gun will go off, or it could just go off randomly at any moment. Can I? What am, am I allowed to do? Stuff in that ten minutes? Yeah, you're allowed to sit there and think about life. No, no, no. Can I like make phone calls? Like make sure my life insurance policy is still set, like you know stuff like that. Pretend like can all I that's done handle already. my affairs in ten pretend, minutes. Pretend all that's done already. Hey, 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 let me answer that. So he has time to think how to answer, <laughs> right? Let me answer that. I would prefer to know exactly ten minutes because I'm that gives him. me ten minutes of joy to get to the finish line. I guess that's true. You know, you have that last ten minutes. Yeah. So yeah, that's maybe, right. maybe. There yeah. you go. But but on the on the flip side, if you're telling me I'm gonna die tomorrow, that that would suck. <laughs> but <laughs> but I guess yeah, I guess I'd rather have the extra. There, there's always value in more time. You know, it's funny. It's funny we talk about this, and I want to take my hat out for all the service men and women that serving this country. We all sit here and we talk about this, right? And that that becomes something obviously something that makes people fear something sad but yet we have these young men and women 20 21 22 they get minimum wage they go to a different country they fight for us and uh, they could die unfortunately at any time but they're brave enough that they fight for us and i always think about that because it gives me a component of bravery where i shouldn't be afraid of anything where i have no right to be afraid of anything because if these kids do it for me who am i to have any objection toward it right mm -hmm. so i want to i want to salute all of our servicemen and women who are serving this country Absolutely. god bless you god bless america because we're talking about this element that obviously is fearful for us but yet to these young people is not at all and god bless them actually absolutely you remind me alex i think our guards for gunner box is full again let's remind the guys next week to get those out to the troops um zaya i really i, I really appreciate you coming on when i met you at the trade show i said we got to get this guy on kma talk radio our fans and listeners need to hear him because you're extremely interesting extremely intelligent yeah. very entertaining yeah. couple hours great show for me uh we hope to have you on again as you keep inventing and creating new things for the world and then keep us updated on what's going on. We deeply appreciate it. Anytime. Uh, I enjoy nope. it. Thank you for your contribution. Please follow us at Smoke In on Facebook and social media and KMA Talk Radio. Um, if you're not part of our awesome private group, uh, Smoke In Social, please check it out. It's a great place, fun place. We hope we entertained you. We hope we made you laugh, learned a little bit, probably learned a lot this Saturday morning. And yeah. uh, next week we have Oliver Nuvad of United Cigar Group. Until then, everyone, keep it lit.